Today we're going to be looking at some volume word problems. I'm going to do the first four problems with you. You're going to try the last two on your own. So first things first, we have Jordan has an Arizona iced tea can that is 10 inches tall with a diameter of 3 inches. Colleen has a Sprite can that is 8 inches tall with the same diameter as the iced tea can. How much more liquid is in the iced tea can? So obviously we're talking liquid, so that is volume because we want to know how much volume each of the cans can hold. And we know that a can is in the form of a cylinder. So we're going to calculate the volume as a cylinder in each case. So we have Jordan's cylinder and Colleen's that we're going to compare. So starting with Jordan, we know that his can is 10 inches tall and has a diameter of 3. So we have volume equals pi times half the diameter would be 1.5 squared times a height of 10. And I'm going to go all the way to the nearest whole number to answer this question. So we have volume equals pi times 1.5 squared is 2 and a quarter times 10. Multiplying that out, we have volume equals 2 and a quarter times 10 is 22.5 pi. And then times pi to the nearest whole number is about 71 inches cubed. Then for Colleen, same idea, volume equals pi times sprite can is 8 inches tall so that would be and with the same diameter so 1.5 squared times 8 so that should be a hint right there that obviously Jordan's is more than Colleen's okay that's why it's asking how much more liquid is in the iced tea can Jordan's had a height of 10 Colleen's is only a height of 8 but the diameter is the same so now we go through volume equals pi times 1.5 squared is again two and a quarter times 8 Leaving the pi for the last step, we have 2 and a quarter times 8 is 18 pi. And again, rounding to the nearest whole number, we get it's approximately, and you know what, we could even use the approximately symbol instead of an equal sign. Squiggle lines mean approximately. So 18 times pi is about 56.5, so we're going to round that to 57 inches cubed. So then how much more liquid is in the iced tea can? How much more implies subtraction? So we do 71 minus 57. We get 14 inches cubed more liquid in the iced tea can. Done. Okay, so hopefully your writing is a little bit neater than mine. For some reason, it's a little messy. Usually, it's much neater. All right, let's take a look at number two together. So now we have Kathy needs a box to send a cylindrical jewelry box to a friend for her birthday. The jewelry box is 18 centimeters tall with a diameter of 8 centimeters. Give possible dimensions of a box that the jewelry box will fit inside with a minimum amount of space left over. What volume of the box is not taken up by the jewelry box? All right, so it's a little tricky here because it says jewelry, jewelry box, but let's remember that this jewelry box has a cylinder shape. All right, so we want to figure out a box, a rectangular box that that cylinder can fit into. So let's think about this first. We have our cylinder here. For a jewelry box that's got a diameter of 8, Ooh, I'm going to redraw this, and a height of 18 centimeters, so let's make this a little bit taller. This whole distance across is 8, and the height is 18. So if I want to fit a, that into a box, maybe I want a box that's at least 18 and a half inches tall and nine and a half inches wide and nine and a half inches this way as well 
I know you're impressed by my three-dimensional drawing skills here. Okay, so now we have to figure out both their volumes and figure out how much volume is not taken up by the cylinder. Okay, so we haven't talked about volume of a rectangular prism, but hopefully you remember from years past that is just length times width times height. So we could do volume equals 9.5 times 9.5 times 18.5 for the prism. So that is 9.5 times 9.5 times 18.5 gives me 1,669.625. So if I'm rounding that to the nearest whole number, I'm going to say it's about 1,670 centimeters cubed. So now we're going to move on to the jewelry box. So that volume is going to be, again, pi r squared times h. So that's pi times 4 squared, not 8 squared because that's the diameter, times 18. So that's pi times 16 times 18. 16 times 18 is 288 pi. And now I want to round the same way I did with the rectangular prism. So 288 pi is approximately 905 centimeters cubed. So again, how much space is not taken up? We're going to subtract. So it's 765 centimeters cubed volume is not taken up by the cylindrical jewelry box when we put it inside of the rectangular box and ship it to our friend. All right, so again, there's a lot of work involved with that. It's always important to make sure you're reading all of it and that you don't miss a step. All right, let's go on to number three. Okay, here we have a can of soda has a height of 4.75 inches and a radius of one and a quarter inches. A box that is five inches by eight inches by five and a half inches contains a six packs of soda. Approximately how much space is not used by the soda cans in the box? So a very similar problem, but still a lot of involvement here. So we can start with our box that the soda is being held by. So that's going to be volume equals five times eight times 5.5, which equals... 220 inches cubed. Then we're going to look at our soda can, which is a cylinder. So its volume is pi r squared h. So that is a height of 4.75 and a radius of 1 and a quarter. So pi times 1 and a quarter squared times 4.75. It's going to give us pi times. 1.5625, don't do any rounding yet, times 4.75, which is 7.421875 times pi, which is approximately, I'm going to round to the nearest whole number again, 23 inches cubed. So now I'm going to go back and read this because I don't want to miss anything here. It says, a box that is 5 by 8 by 5.5 contains a 6-pack of soda. So the volume we collected or calculated is only for one can. So we need to multiply that by 6. 23 times 6 gives us 138 inches cubed. Then we want to figure out how much space is not used by the soda cans in the box. So we do 220 minus 138. Gives us 82 inches 
cubed of free space in the box. All right. So again, a lot of involvement there. It's very important to reread the problem to make sure you didn't miss any steps. All right. I'm going to do one more problem with you before you're on your own. Okay. So number four. Tiana would like to buy ice cream cones for her birthday party, but since she does not have very much ice cream, she wants cones with the smallest volume. Which of the following brand of ice cream cones should she buy? So it's a cone. We have to make sure we remember the volume of a cone. So that formula is volume equals one third pi r squared h. And we're going to go through and find each of those volumes. Brand A, we have volume equals one third pi radius is 4, so that's 4 squared, and times the height, which is 15. So volume equals 1 third pi times 16 times 15. I'm going to move around this 1 third and get rid of it. A third of 15 is 5, so pi times 16 times 5. And 16 times 5 is 80, so we have volume equals 80 pi. Now, if I'm just trying to figure out which one has the greatest volume, I don't have to do anything other than leave it in terms of pi. By getting it to terms of pi, I'll be able to tell, well, which one is bigger than the other. So now looking at the other one, I go through the same process. Volume equals one-third pi times r squared. This one's given the diameter is a base of 10. So we have to change that to 5 squared times 12. So volume equals one-third pi times 25 times 12. Getting rid of the 1 third. 12 is divisible by 3, so I'm going to do pi times 25 times 4. So final answer, volume equals 100 pi. 100 is bigger than 80, so brand B is bigger than brand A. So we want to go with brand A because it has the smallest volume. All right, so you're going to give number five and number six a shot. I'll be around to help you out.